Welcome back, guys, to the Wet Shaving Wet Shaving Podcast Roundtable Wet Shavers Roundtable Podcast. <laughs> wow, you just totally blew that. <laughs> I know, I totally messed it up. This is the one and only Wet Shaving Talk Show, and it is awesome. Today we have a very special guest. We have Mark Hero, Mantic59. Thank you, Mantic, for being on with us today, sir. My pleasure. And yeah, it's great uh, to have you, Mantic. Yes, and as always, we have our favorite security guard from uh, Jerry Springer. We have <laughs> Marty Pape. Hi, guys. Yeah, I'm Steve. <laughs> <laughs> we also have the one and only, and this time our world traveling, I guess, or not really world traveling, but just traveling wet shaver down under, Con Casazidis. How are you doing today, sir? Hello, folks. Good morning, good evening, good afternoon, and good whatever you are. Yes. Goodbye. <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs> and he's in an undisclosed location at the moment for no reason. And we also have our favorite captain, the one and only Douglas Knight. Oh, here I come to save the day. That means that mighty mouse oh, is man. good to be here. <laughs> And as oh, always, I am sorry. Rico from Rico's <laughs> Corner. <laughs> you never know what's going to happen. And uh, you can tweet to us at WS Roundtable to be a part of the conversation. And if you guys wouldn't mind, if you're on Twitter, you can also tweet out wetshavingtv.xyz. And that is a pre No, don't tweet out. Go there. Go, go there. Rico. This is you a web. Go to this domain, wetshavingtv.xyz. This will take you to a pre-populated tweet, folks, and it'll aid us getting the word out that you are, in fact, watching your favorite wet shaving television show. <laughs> yeah, hold that up one more time, Douglas. Hold that page up one more time. Wetshaving.xyz. Yeah. <laughs> wetshavingtv.xyz. I can't read. And pre-populated tweet. Yeah, I... Just hit so... send, folks. It will be awesome. So, real quick, uh, a lot of people out there may or may not know our guest. Uh, I'm sure most of you guys do, but I like to get the people out there a little more familiarized with our guest. So, Mantic, I've just got a few quick questions for you, Sure. if you wouldn't mind. First thing, I normally like to end the questions with like a kind of oddball, off-the-wall question that's kind of... But I figure I'm going to hit you up, up front with it. So, because a lot of people watch you, that's how they get into wet shaving. Are you the godfather of wet shaving? <laughs> uh, I, I don't think so. I think I just happen to be at, in the right spot at the right time with the right <laughs> equipment. Uh, it was a, uh, it was a, uh, a happy coincidence. Yeah. So... I know you've talked about this before on another awesome podcast called Mustache and Blade, uh, but I'm sure a lot of guys haven't heard. How did you get started into wet shaving? Well, actually, uh, I shaved with a electric razor for 30 years and never really thought about it much. Uh, it's what my father used, and I ended up using his old razor and, and you know, just kept on using electric razors. But uh, in the 90s, uh, I met a, uh, a very nice young lady who is now my wife. All right. And uh, <laughs> just, I, I adored the feeling of a freshly shaved face, uh, just using her hand on a freshly shaved face. And uh, she liked it, but uh, my face would get, in, in her words, all sandpapery again uh, in a fairly short time. Well, we got married, and then a... Uh, a year or so after we had gotten married, we were watching television and saw a, a show about things to do in Las Vegas, and we had gotten married in Las Vegas. And one of the things this show uh, showed was a, uh, a, uh, a shave, an old-fashioned barber shave uh, by uh, The Art of Shaving, which I had never heard of. And my wife said, oh, you need to try that next time we go to Las Vegas. And I just kind of shrugged my shoulders and said, fine, went about my business. Well, uh, the next year, we, we went back to Las Vegas for our wedding anniversary. And uh, 
one morning she came to me and said, uh, don't shave today, I've got a present for you. Well, she took me down to Art of Shaving, and they gave me an old-fashioned barber shave, and that was the end of it right there. I was, uh, it was life-changing. It was completely, uh, my face was just completely soft and, and smooth in a way I'd never seen before, and I knew it was something I had to investigate more, and that's what got everything started. So uh, when my when I say I want to buy something for wet shaving, uh, my wife says fine, uh, because there's nothing she can do because she started me on it. Well, wow. So kind of a follow up from a uh, a viewer out there, Jeff Atkinson. He says, "Is it safe to say that wet shaving is the reason you landed your wife?" <laughs> <laughs> no, actually, that was poor. Uh, I hope my uh, my uh, my personality maybe may had a, a little bit uh, to do with it, <laughs> or maybe she, I'm just feeling uh, uh, that uh, that she uh, that she will put up with. I don't know. But, uh, you know, you left out the, the best part, Mark. Wasn't there like a, a mommy like it or mommy likey or something like that? Yeah, after the uh, that's true. after the shave at Art of Shaving, she uh, she caressed my face and said, "Ooh, mama likes." <laughs> yeah, yeah, that always sticks with me. That's I was actually awesome. thinking about you today uh, at the gym, Mark. I, I walked in on uh, this guy shaving with an electric razor, and I was like, oh, "Okay." This is foreshadowing for Mark's story because I know Rico's going to pick his brain about it. I almost stopped the guy. I was like, hey, you need to go check out the show tonight. But I uh, let live. <laughs> well, real quick before I uh, jump into the rest of these questions, I have noticed our favorite guy with a mouth, the truth Gonzalez, is here. David, welcome to the show, sir. Crashed us. Yeah, it's, it's been a very hectic couple days. Um, coming back from a, an event with uh, my wife and, and son, and um, we're in the car. I don't know you guys can probably see the scenery outside. And of course, with the great Mantic on, there's no way I could miss today's episode. So I had to jump on, man. Well, yeah, you like photo bombed him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sorry about that. So, Mantic, just a couple more <laughs> questions for you. Uh, what would you say is the most important aspect of wet shaving? The most important aspect of wet shaving. You know, I think it's time. Uh, make the time to do it properly. Make the time to enjoy the scent of a uh, of a shaving lather. Uh, make the time to make a nice warm lather so you uh, it feels good. Uh, take a little extra time with the actual shaving process to get a smoother, more comfortable shave. It, it all rolls back to time for me. And you don't even have to make a whole lot of extra time. You just need to decide that you're not going to spend uh, a minute and a half swiping a, uh, a multi-blade razor across your face with some goo from a can and get out to your day. Yeah. Uh, just spend a little time for yourself and it'll all come together. So kind of, kind of in line with that question, uh, I know a lot of your videos are Really, really helpful for guys that are just getting into the hobby. Uh, you're also a blogger. You have sharpologist.com where you review products and talk about all kinds of aspects of wet shaving. And uh, and you even touch on stuff that's not just wet shaving. It's kind of stuff that's, I guess, the guys that are still doing the regular kind of cartridge stuff, I guess. But uh, So a guy that's just getting into wet shaving, what would, what would be, I guess, a number one tip you would give them and what would you tell them to get first? What would be the first thing? A brush, razor, certain kind of razor, soap? I think for, for me, uh, I generally suggest people start concentrating on making a really nice, ple pleasant lather uh, and uh, learning proper technique with that lather and with shaving, and then when you feel comfortable with it, when you're making a good, nice lather that feels good and smells good, then if you want, uh, I think you'll, most people will just realize that uh, they don't need the 27 blade razor that vibrates, uh, that, they <laughs> yeah. can, uh, that they can actually get a really good shave with uh, just a few basic things. Uh, you know, and if, if you want the immediate uh, go out and, and grab it kind of stuff. Uh, I could almost, you know, recommend, uh, you know, something like this. Yeah. 
uh, Vanderhagen. It's available in a ton of different places. Um, the soap is, the, especially the new, their new premium soap, I think, is actually pretty good. Uh, I think it's a good, yeah. solid soap, and even the uh, their their basic soap isn't bad. Uh, but the uh, the new premium soap uh, is uh, is I think very competitive with a lot of the g better artisan products. Uh, by coincidence, and I'll have uh, more of this on Charpologist probably next next month. I actually went and visited Vanderhagen. Uh, a few weeks ago, oh, wow. they're here in Texas. Uh, they're they're a day trip away, so I actually got down there and took a bunch of pictures inside their warehouse and uh, how they make their soaps. Uh, their their ingredients come in 55 gallon drums, and they oh, make, wow. <laughs> they make just an outrageous amount of soap at one time. It's like 30,000 pucks at once, and uh, <laughs> wow. their shipping is is just insane. There are boxes everywhere. And uh, they get semi-trucks in bound for Walgreens, Walmart, uh, all these different places. You know, they're available darn near everywhere. They're, they're ubiquitous. And, you know, for a, for a beginner wanting to start out something right now, to be able to go down to Target or to Walgreens or Walmart and actually pick it up, it's not bad. Uh, you know, it's, yeah. the set is twenty-five dollars, and I think it's a it's something to start with. Yeah, and I have to say, I started with that Vanderhagen uh, twist open razor, and it's actually not a bad razor. It's mild, but uh, it's really not bad for the cost. And that's actually the razor my wife still uses to this day. So uh, it's it's a cheap, great way to get into the hobby and. Um, so last question for you that I will ask, at least for now, <laughs> is uh, things have changed for you. Uh, you're now doing Sharpologist and Mantic 59 full time. Yep. So when you got into the hobby, um, and I don't know, tell me again, how long ago was that? Well, I did my first YouTube video in 2006. Okay, so yeah, that almost 10 years. Almost 10 years. Um, so from when you got in to now, has your perspective on wet shaving changed, and what about it has changed? My personal perspective hasn't really changed. I'm in it uh, for, uh, I don't want to say the pleasure, but maybe that is the right word, the pleasure of myself and my wife. Uh, it's it's yep. something I enjoy. Uh, it is something that... Uh, has some variety to it. You can you can do things as your mood swings, um, and I think it's really changed, particularly in the past three to five years, for the better. In that, uh, there are a lot more people getting into uh, traditional wet shaving than there used to be. When I first got into it, there was yep. one little, really two. Uh, little forums. One was on uh, MSN forums, which is no longer around. The other was on uh, the Yahoo forums, which is no longer around. Yeah. Uh, but the Yahoo forum <laughs> one actually turned into Straight Razor Place. So uh, that been okay. around for some time. Um, but the interest and uh, exposure and the the industry, if you will, has grown quite a bit uh, in the past few years, and I think that's partly due to maybe uh, the uh, the large razor manufacturers continuing the razor blade wars and, and coming out with something yeah. <laughs> more and more ridiculous for more and more money, and people yeah. are just finally throwing up their hands and say, enough, there's got to be something better. Yeah, exactly. Uh well, again, Mark, I just want to say thank you for being on the show. We really appreciate you being here. My pleasure. And this is now the part, guys. No, thank you again. Um, this is now the part, guys, where we talk about and highlight products that we're kind of digging this week at the moment. It seems like if you're kind of in the hobby like we are, uh, stuff's changing almost every day for us because there's just so much stuff out there to try. So we'll start with you, Mark. A couple things, a few things you would like to highlight that you're I'm uh, excited really about, doing. Mark's. Yeah. Well, as a matter of fact, uh, my Rube Goldberg setup here, 
Um, nice. I'm digging. I have. Two. And guys, so you guys know out there, Mark uh, was the genius that found this out. I didn't know you could do this, but apparently you can toggle between two cameras. So what you're looking at is his, I guess, B-roll camera right now. So camera, right? Yeah. And uh, a couple things. Uh, it's no secret that the Mercure Progress is my favorite razor. <laughs> yeah. It has That's been for razor. years and years and years. I love it to death. Uh, I've tried a gazillion other razors, and I keep on coming back to the Progress. Uh, a few months ago, I decided to plunk down some money for the Eskimo Progress. Uh, you can get it blue goo uh, full goose, pardon me. And this is basically a uh, progress that's been retrofitted with a new handle. Beautiful oh, wow. uh, black onyx. Actually, I think they call it blue onyx. It looks more black to me. But uh, just a pretty, pretty razor uh, that I've been really enjoying up until about a week ago. And about a week ago, I got... <laughs> Here we go. This is what I'm talking about. Yep. <laughs> Bam. One of the one blades. And no, let me no. tell you, uh, this is one hell of a razor. Uh, it is also a very expensive razor, but it really has impressed the living hell out of me on its performance, on its, uh, its uh, how well it's built, uh, Everything about it. It comes in this nice little uh, tanned leather box, and when you open it yeah, up that's here, beautiful you get box. a nice little, uh, nice little instruction book, uh, instruction things, and then you get the razor itself. I'll dun, dun, it dun, dun. Because it actually comes in its own little stand, like wow. this. You can actually is that stand solid? That sand is solid. Uh, it is a solid wow. stainless steel sand that just sits like that. And this is a single blade razor that uses blades from the old Ballet Autostrop. And it slides wow. in the back like this. Easy peasy, nice and easy, ready to go. And this blade is a single blade, but also has a pivot. Now, if anybody... And that's what I'm talking about. Yeah. That, that is... People have always asked me uh, if I like modern, modern razors. And I tell people, I, I don't like the multi-blade cartridges, but I think actually a pivot is one of the few good ideas of the modern, modern razor. I agree. Um, Mark, uh, I'm sorry. I do have a question in, in terms of that. You don't have to put too much pressure down on the razor in order to really get the effect of the pivot because no. that's something I was kind of concerned with when I seen that. You do not have to put a whole lot of pressure down. Uh, it, 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 you need perhaps a tiny bit more pressure compared to a double edge, but uh, the, the pivot action is actually pretty good. What uh, is causing that, Mark? It's not very clear. Is it a spring? Uh, you know, I honestly don't know. Uh, oh, you can't there must see. be some kind wow. of spring. It's a spring action, but right. the spring is not obvious if you look. That at makes the, the engineering even more impressive. You oh. know, just uh, it doesn't look all ugly and springs everywhere. It's just really clean looking design. Yeah, That's nice. Really nice. Really, really nice. Yeah. Um, My only I concern was, is the blades curious. and the availability. I'll tell. I'll, I'll go through that in a minute. I was curious. Yeah in that whether a gem razor, a gem blade might work. And it, it's the yeah. size, but this back spine will not go into the blade. If there's a way to take off this black wow. back spine, it, uh, it might. But anyway, uh, removing a blade, just simply raising up and pulling it out a little bit, putting it back in. That and I've been cool. using this razor now for... Uh, about a week and a half, two weeks, and it is rapidly, rapidly becoming the razor that will knock off my progress from its throne. It Unbelievable. Wow. wow. Look at that. Something. You else. heard it here first, folks. Yeah. <laughs> now, the big downside to it's... this razor is the cost. 
This is a three hundred dollar yes. razor. Uh, the, the one blade Damn. people make no bones about that they are targeting the luxury niche end. Uh, they yeah. spent several years in development of this with uh, venture capital. They did not go out to a uh, an Indiegogo or a, or a Kickstarter. Uh, this is pure, yeah. pure venture capital. And um, they are getting ready for their hard launch probably in a week or so. It's in a soft launch right now and that you can go to OneBladeShave.com and, and order it. And when you do, of course, they uh, will send... Uh, blades with you, and they prefer okay. to do a uh, uh, a subscription for the blades. Uh, although you can get them in other places, they are uh, Feather brand. Oh, okay, cool. Uh, they are feathers. And do do you know what what other vendors will be holding those kind of blades, or do you have to go through Feather uh, directly? Ra uh, razor blades and more did carry them. Uh, they are currently out of stock, okay. but I, that oh, is wow. the only place I know that has them in the inventory. Oh, I got to talk to Dave Mendoza. I got to talk to that guy then. What uh, are they called? Well, you know that's a good question. I've always just seen them as the feather single blade. Oh yeah, wow! They're obviously not. I wonder. Try a blade has them or for, uh, worth it, worth checking. Oh, uh, 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 Dave. He's he's pretty easy to access on uh on Facebook, and he actually lives per, like about 30 minutes away from me, so I'll talk to him about it, see if he has any like details on those blades. I will say that so, you know, the subscription is something that they suggest. Uh, you can pause it or cancel it at any time, from what I'm being told. Uh, okay. Also, uh, I don't know if I'd call it an, an, a downside or not, but uh, the blade life is not as good as a DE. I can get maybe three shaves out of this. One blade mm, actually okay. suggests a That's new blade for every shave. I can get can, three can, blades pretty pretty reasonably, but that's about the the, the life. And how much per, how much would you, would be the cost for the blades? What would you say per per blade cost be would be? I would say roughly a dollar. Ah, uh, that's not life changing, but uh, significantly more than the double edge. Yes. Yeah. So is. these are auto strop blades, though they're. They are valet. Mark? My understanding is that they these were blades that could fit into the valet auto strop. So then they can they have stropping in mind then when they put these out, right? So no, could, they do not. They, oh, they don't. Oh, uh, okay. No, they're just modeled okay. after those razors, probably. It, it's simply yeah. the, it's simply the blade that they researched. They they went through many 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 blades. I actually sat down with the CEO who is also in uh, Texas, near Austin, so it was another day trip oh, for wow. me. I sat down with him, and, and we, dis we talked about this for a half a day, and uh, they went through many, many blade variations. Uh, they at one time looked at the, uh, for example, the, the feather single blades that go into Chevette's, and they decided yeah. that still was not for them. They were a little bit wider than they wanted. And so they continued looking and eventually settled on this particular blade. Cool. So, uh, yeah, man, that is a beautiful razor. So oh, it's gorgeous. It, it's, you, it's relatively heavy, but really well balanced. And where can people find more, Mark? Right now, it's available at OneShaveBlade.com. O N E Shave Blade. Well, uh, wait a minute. <laughs> uh, <laughs> let me try that again. OneBladeShave.com. O N E B L A D E Shave.com. Excellent. Thank you. What? Uh, I know you've tried the mongoose, and um, what's another one you've tried? I've got the uh, the uh, Cobra Classic. I've got the King okay. Cobra. I've I've tried all these razors. So, beside the blade itself being wider on those, because all those use the Shavette style, right? The King Cobra yes. and the Mongoose. Yes. What would you say? And besides the pivot, what is the big difference between those versus the one the one razor that you're liking a lot? Wow, the pivot is the big one. 
Uh, the balance okay. is, is excellent. Uh, not to say these aren't well balanced, but I find the one blade is better balanced. Um, okay. The shave the, is the the blade is just really smooth. Usually, like the first shave or two with a with the feather chevette blade are for me uh, kind of harsh, uh, kind yeah. of aggressive, yeah. and then they calm down for the yeah. for the following sh shaves. Unless maybe I cork them. And they're maybe a little better. Uh, consistently, the one blade blade <laughs> just yeah. seems to be really smooth, uh, really comfortable. It just basically wipes away the the, the stubble with no muss, no fuss. Uh, it, it just, like I said, really impressed the heck out of me using it for the past couple of weeks. Wow. Very cool. Well, that is way super cool and a very beautiful razor. If you guys are, and this will probably be after the fact, listening to this, uh, you can go back on YouTube and watch it if you want to see specifically what Mark is talking about. Really beautiful razor. And uh, thanks, man. Thanks for sharing that with us. So um, real quick, I'll just kind of touch on a couple items, and then I'm going to go down the panel here. Um, I'm kind of going way old school. Actually, first, let me do a shout out to my sister. She went to India for her friend's wedding, which is a crazy long trip just to go to a wedding. But she sent me, and at first I thought this was Kopi Luwak, the uh, civet coffee. Well, it looks, well, it looks more like Pepe. Pepe Le Pew yeah. from this end. But this, <laughs> this is Monsoon Malabar Coffee, and apparently they're so proud of these, what do they call them, Ratufa Indica, which is the largest squirrel in the world that they put it on the front package of this coffee. <laughs> anyway, the coffee's really good, so I just want to give a shout-out to my sister for sending me this awesome coffee, which I, I brewed today Turkish style, and it's stout stuff. Anyway, gear. So, uh, and Mark, we can talk about this later, but you were talking about an old vintage brush. Uh, this is a new one that Douglas is making, the Crown King, and it's got... I didn't bring the other one, but you can replace the, I guess, the head, the brush, with a different brush. And uh, just kind of that old school, I don't know if you guys can see that very well. And I'm really, really digging this brush. Synthetic, really great stuff. And then as far as product, I'm kind of going old school. Uh, this is stuff I got when I first started wet shaving because I was concerned about... Um, irritation and stuff and this was one of the products a lot of guys kept referring back to was Crampert's Finest and it doesn't really smell pleasant it doesn't smell bad but it's super menthol and if you're not used to menthol this will freeze your face off and I love it <laughs> the other one is Baxter of California Aftershave Balm this kinda has a light lime just a real refreshing lime mentholated scent, and I'm digging this one. Still kind of hot out there, guys, if you're in the U.S. or that kind of region of the world. And menthol is your friend this time of year. And then, um, real quick, the V-Long Horsehair Brush. I am loving this brush. It is totally different than Badger. Uh, it's kind of a combination, I would say, of badger and boar a little bit, um, but you gotta make you gotta maintain these just a little better. You gotta kind of comb them after they dry, um. and make sure they're not all tangled up. But I love this brush, and they've got some major funk to them when you first use them. So <laughs> <laughs> you gotta you gotta you gotta use it a few times to get rid of it. But I love this horsehair brush. It's awesome. And then finally, we can just kind of chat about this. I wanted to know your guys' thoughts on this, but I'm not really highlighting it because I haven't used it yet. But this is an old-school travel oh, yeah. razor. Yeah. And I just, like, I, I don't understand the logic here. Like, I get it for travel. You want light and small. and But that handle is just ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. But it's beautiful. It's ridiculous but beautiful. It is ridiculous but beautiful. So, uh, David, we'll hop on over to you. What 
products would you like to highlight this week, sir? Um, this week, as I announced last week, um, I was yeah, using the... <laughs> Uh, now I'm in my room. I finally got into Baudouin? my room, and I'm just, uh, I'm just, I'm in the grotto, like right now. Yeah. I'm just finally relaxing, dude. I'm, I'm, I'm worn out. It's hot as hell. I was on the sun, so let me have my moment, Douglas. Damn you. I'm sorry, lo siento. <laughs> but um, no, as I mentioned last week, I shaved all week long with the Wolfman razor, and just kind of giving my final thoughts on it. I'll probably shave with it one more time before I ship it out, probably Monday. Yeah. And just generally, I'm really impressed with those razors. They're very well built, um, just solid. Um, the way the blade locks in for me is very similar to the mongoose. It's just once it's locked, once the blade gets tightened into with the cap and everything, it's just solid, no movement, no chatter, nothing. It just it, it's it's really nicely put together. I'm really impressed with the head design from the Wolfman razors. Cool. Is the Wolfman in production or is it still just in limited quantities? It's they they haven't been able to build up a in an inventory. It's pretty much very similar to like the mongoose. They're making some, then shipping out to people on the waiting list. But they haven't been able to keep up with the demand as of yet. So if you get one, you either have to have been on the waiting list for a couple months, or you get one like on a buy sell trade group. I bought oh. mine from a buddy of mine, a fellow YouTuber named um, Eric Bur Burgos. He goes by shaving with Uncle W. And yeah. we go back and forth talking on the YouTube, on YouTube and stuff, and uh, he sent it. So I've been doing videos with those. So yeah, he's cool people. He has some great stuff. So yeah, that's how I have it. I've been lucky enough to be able to have a, a connect here and there to be able to try some interesting things. Cool. So quick, quick question for you, David. I know you're liking it. If once it becomes available, would you buy it? If I had the money available, absolutely. I still. Um, again, I've had, I have now about seven shades with it now. I think I like the above the tie razor uh, R2 plate yeah. a little bit better because it's just a tad bit more aggressive than the one I'm using. I wish I could remember which one, which model I'm using, but if you check on my YouTube channel, it has the model on there. But the, the R2 is just a tad bit more aggressive. Not a whole lot, but just it kind of hits my, my aggressive level perfectly, the above the tie razor. So I want to buy that one first before I would get the Wolfman. But the Wolfman is fantastic, and it's definitely daily driver worthy because it's just very, it's a very smooth, efficient shaver, and I've gotten zero irritation using it. Wow. Is uh, you have any other stuff you want to highlight? Or? No, I'm good. I'm yep. really pretty sweet with these ones. <laughs> All right, man. Thanks, man. Uh, Marty. Jump on over to you, sir. All right. Before I start, real quick, uh, Gonzo just messaged me, said he wished he could be involved today, but he's driving, so he just said hello. Didn't hey, stop Gonzo. David. <clears throat> okay. Yeah, right. Excuse me. For So everybody that's been watching my channel and kind of been keeping up knows that I'm just getting back into straight razor shaving. I tried before, didn't really Horrible. succeed with it. And now, shut it. Um, and now, um, I think I'm on day 17 or something like that in a row. Yeah. And I've been picking up razors because I figured out real quick I like. I'm starting to like it and have the technique a lot better. So I got in a couple this week. Um, haven't used this one yet from uh, Mike McKinley. It's a uh, Joseph and Rogers uh, wedge. Haven't used yet. Blade needs a little work, but it's honed up, ready to go. So I'm going to use that. Um, bone scales. So something kind of cool there. I got a uh, Tori uh, 0146, nice little deal there, and then the uh, Today's Shave, and it's a life changer, it was a game changing shave is what I called it, because it's the first time I've had a straight razor shave where the first pass with the grain, I could have been done. I felt that smooth with one pass, I did two passes with one tiny little touch up right here on my chin strap spot. And it was baby butt smooth even on my neck, basically, and that's never happened before. Um, and that is a Japanese Tawa oh, wow. that I got from, uh, I got the name here, uh, Stefan, uh, probably going to butcher it, uh, Stoyano Stoyanov. Um, I think he's out of Iowa, if I remember correctly. And this thing, it's a, uh, it's a frame back. I don't know if you can see that or not through there. Yeah. So it's just kind of a really cool, um, got some nice weight to it. He put a killer edge on it. And it just was a natural, natural shave. I just, there was nothing, there was no, I would get a weird transition around my middle part of my neck where the hair changes growth pattern. Normally with the straight, it'll kind of, not tug, but it'll give me more resistance on that. It just cut through it like butter. My chin, 
against the grain. Normally it's a fight because it's real coarse there, and it just sliced it perfectly. And so, yeah, this uh, this Japanese razor is just, uh, it won my heart in one shave. I'll just wow. put it that way. Wow. That's a beautiful well, razor, I'm man. hearing great things about Japanese razors. I haven't been able to use the Japanese yet, but I hear nothing but good things about them. Yeah, yeah so it's, yeah, it's just, like I said, it's just a fantastic little deal, and yeah, I, so I'm so happy I got Japanese it. It's not a Japanese Kamasori razor. It's a, it's a Western-style razor. But... Yeah, it's, it's called a frame, frame back. Huh, okay. Real? Yeah, is it one piece that that's is or is that? Is, sorry, sorry, it's breaking up. Is it one solid piece? Um, I don't know the full dynamic of it, but it looks like the blade yeah. itself is actually pinched in the spine. Okay, yeah, that's what it looks like. So that's the way it appears to be. So, wow, cool. Very cool. Uh, Very cool. Real quick, I have another question for you, Mark. I know. Your first shave, you got a straight razor shave at the Art of Shaving. Do you continue to use a straight razor? I I prefer uh, a double edge or now the the one blade. I have done straight razors. In fact, uh, by coincidence, I think uh, late September, early October, I'm going to be doing a, a a series of videos and articles on. Sharpologist about straight razors. Fantastic. Uh, I'm, I'm getting a little bit better at it, but I'm by no stretch of the imagination uh, yeah. an expert at, at straight razors. I've got uh, a few really nice straight razors uh, and a few just okay ones, and uh, I've come up actually with a way to do training wheels, if you will, uh, for oh, do tell. somebody beginning. To uh, uh, to try straight razors, uh, but uh, I'm I'm just frankly not that good at it right now. Yeah, what well, I want to jump. The, what is the training? What is the training wheels, Mark? You gotta um, read Sharpologist to find out, fool. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let me see if I still have. No, because this this could be like uh, this goes with my open comb uh, concept. I think the guard. Um. You want to you want to jump back leave, to that in a second? Leave, Get back I, to me. Go off camera for just a minute, oh. and I'll I'll show you. Okay. Let okay. Me, yeah. Let me let me. Inquiring uh, minds want to know. Yeah. Yes, I'll Rico, we'll miss, we'll, we'll miss you, Mark. Rico, I'm sure will be sad every second you're gone. <laughs> I'm gonna jump to Douglas on what gear he's using, and I actually want to jump back with Mark in a while. Uh, something Marty touched on about uh, he was talking about parts on his neck. I know Mark did a great article on Sharpologists about irritation on your neck and mapping your your grain so I kind of want to touch on that I think that might be some helpful info for guys out there but Douglas what stuff would you like to highlight this week and and well, I, I gotta say really, really, your your shirt is very confusing that is not soccer what are you talking about that is not soccer depends what country you're from <laughs> it depends what country you're in man <laughs> soccer and football change all the time uh, anyways yeah. So I, had, I I just had a thought well, when Mark was talking about this razor, this one-blade um, razor, is I wonder if they're in cahoots with feather blades, since that's the only blade they're going to be using. I wonder if feather is all... Mark, do you know if feather is has any uh, horse in the game with um, the one-blade, if, they, if they're backing them at all? No, they are not backing them. They're not? Okay. No. Okay. They're just subcontracted okay. to do the blades then, right? Yes. Okay. Well, Interesting. that's... That's the blade they are using. Uh, yeah. So that blade was already in existence before yes. the one blade came out. Yes, that's correct. Oh. I'm I'm assuming guys were using just old vintage auto straps or something then, right? I, I would assume so. Uh, from what I've never seen guys using them, but from what I understand from the one blade <clears throat> CEO, uh, actually for feather. Those particular blades, they do not consider a razor blade. They consider it some other kind of blade. Interesting. Uh, wow. Yeah. That's Ooh. incredibly odd. Sur maybe surgical yeah, I thought or something. Too, actually. Yeah. yeah. Interesting. So what well, do you got, Mark? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Here's a, uh, a typical, uh, typical uh, straight razor. And my training wheels literally... Are a couple of these plain paper office yes. clips? Yes. Okay. Yeah. 
That's oh, wow. pretty damn good. That's pretty fucking good. <laughs> and then you rest it on the side, and it gives you the pretty much the correct angle you need. I love it. For going with a straight shape. It does not work well with every single direction, you know, with every single nook and cranny. Yeah. But for the beginner, which I'm targeting, for doing yep. that straight down initial pass, it's a training training wheels. It's perfect. <laughs> it's brilliant. It's brilliant. That is awesome. These <laughs> things are available, you know, damn near anywhere. Uh, yeah. Walmart, Walgreens, office supply stores, they come in different sizes. So if uh, you have a maybe an, an 8.8 uh, razor or a, a 4.8 razor, you may, might need a different size. Uh, so it may take a little bit of experimentation. But uh, that's what I will be talking about on my... Uh, beginner's wet shaving series that I'm working on right now uh, for my YouTube channel and Sharpologist. And don't worry, next week it'll be available on PAA with the PAA logo <laughs> and decal on those clips. I guarantee it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, I'm going to call it the Mantic. <laughs> you saw it here first. Uh, yeah. And to, Nobody... my knowledge, to my knowledge, I haven't seen anybody else try this. And it may not work for a lot of people, but uh, it seems to work for me. And the couple people that I've uh, kind of guinea pigged it on, um, it's it's a way to to build up that muscle memory of the correct angle for a straight razor. Sure, sure. You know, Mark, uh, that looking at that, it gave me an idea. Actually, do you know um, those little uh, what are they for pencils? So like little kids learn how to hold pencils correctly, like triangular little yeah, rubber yeah. things that you slide over a pencil. I know what you're talking you don't know about. What I'm talking about. I wonder if you cut a slit in that, if you use, if you slid that on, it would cover more surface area of that, but it's also rubber, so it would protect the blade itself, too. But um, it, next time you're at Staples looking for those clips, ask them for the pencil guard yeah. things, too, and they'll know what you're yeah. talking about. But yeah, I, I that might work in the same, because they're triangular. They're triangular as well. That might work uh, just as well, we, if not uh, okay. just as well. <laughs> we do have... Uh, Excellent. Okay. Real quick, I just want what to say I have this we week. have a guy, uh, Stephen Davidson, just saying that is an awesome idea, Mark. So oh. applaud you on that. That is really cool. <laughs> All right, Douglas. Yeah. Oh, man, what is it? Oh. It's a Milord. It's a Milord. Milord. It's uh, one of my, my new vintage razors. It's actually in excellent condition. Uh, I've been using this all week. Um it doesn't have a date code on it, so I, I believe it's somewhere it's between like 1946 and 1950. Yeah. But it's it's just really beautiful, and it's gold coated in gold. Um, how is so I've been it using that? In how is it compared to the red the red tip? As far as aggressiveness, it's not as good as the red tip. So uh, it's it's very similar to uh, an adjustable aristocrat in in my experience. Uh, I I don't care for it too too much, but I don't really care for. Um, one piece razors, anyways. That I like a three piece. Yeah. You know, but uh, it's just too clunky the head, and it's it's really just difficult on the neck for me. I don't. But again, I've only used it for a week. I'm sure if I you know would shed with it for a little while, I would definitely you know fall in love with it. And who knows, I may end up doing that after this week. But uh, we'll see where that goes. <laughs> but what I've been using for soap is Tiki Surfs Up, uh, only because it's the end of summer now. Well, also because it's an excellent soap. But end of summer. And this also reminds me of like old school copper tone and like baby oil. It's, it's very beachy. So yeah. classic summer scent, uh, surfs up, I'm doing that. And I've been chasing that with, I've been like really digging like, or trying to find alternatives to uh, Clubman, Pinata Clubman's. Yep. And so uh, just alternatives. And what I found is Booster. Have you tried these? Booster Moosewood. Moosewood. This is made in Canada. Made in Canada. It's very similar to Clubman in scent. It's that bar. It's a classic barbershop scent. Very talky, uh, citrusy. It's it's very it's very close to Clubman. Uh, and it's probably like ten ten bucks, twelve bucks a bottle. And then there is Coachman. Oh wow. Which is also also very similar to Clubman. And this is also like probably nine dollars. And this is so similar that there's a a disclaimer on it about Clubman is a registered trademark of American <laughs> International Industries. So, like, this one is, like, spot on. Wow. So this is just some alternatives to Club 
Clubman, some cheap alternatives. Um, and I also got Khan was very nice to send me some Canadian soap. I haven't heard of this one before. I really can't get it to work that well though. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, it's good. it smells great. I mean, it put a lot. Is of that is that stuff. Italian Vegemite? <laughs> I think it's Italian, but it's it came from uh, Australia. It says on the back, anyways. But yeah, I mean, I, once I dial this in, I mean, I've been yeah, loading it, it like I hate it. That's right. You suck it up. <laughs> That was so that. Oh, I also I wanted to uh now uh now we're we're heading over to uh to Britain. Um, what we have here is I just wanted to give a little tip out to some folks that uh that drink tea. For yes. those of you who drink tea or your significant other drinks tea, look for this in the cupboard because once the tea is gone, it makes a perfect blade bank. That is awesome. Yes, I picked this up at World Market. If there's a World Market near you, pick, uh, find one, find it there. If not, this is called English Breakfast. Oh, what is this called? Did it? Did, did. And I, I don't I know think, the name of this tea. The, it's telephone like, tea. Yeah, <laughs> I feel like guys that are what? What is that show? Uh, I, mean, I, sh I should know this because like I am a nerd in this way. Do but Doctor Who. Doctor, Doctor Who. Who. I feel like somebody could pimp that out too and make it. <laughs> Doctor Who ish somehow too. I'm sure you know. Honestly, I'm sure the same company makes this in Asia, and <laughs> it is painting it blue for the doctor for the police box. So that yeah. and okay, so that's pretty much what I got going on this week. But I also want to remind people that there is a giveaway happening today, folks. There and what two giveaways, win, right? Well, yeah, it's, it's like a prize package. You it's, can win it's Crown King, Sacre Blue, Sacre Blue, aftershave slash cologne, uh, Sacre Blue. Shaving soap, and this is a tribute to Aqua Velva, by the way. I have a, I have and, a problem oh, with, gosh. The, with the packaging being pink, and it's after Aqua Aqua Velva blue. That just doesn't, <laughs> that just doesn't sit well with me. Oh man! You know it's funny, dude, because it's it's purple, man. It's purple. <laughs> that shit looks pink. <laughs> yeah, nine out of ten men, I think, are colorblind. Uh, uh, also, the shirt I have on right now is purple. <laughs> what color was it when it you looks bought like it? Right. Blue. Yeah. Also, uh, second prize package is a um, a long rider, suave brush with Elios blades and a Merker uh, Futur, or as Marty has. Marty actually has the the one that's going out. But yeah, so so people, nice. you are qualified to win these if you are participating in the Twitter feed and on um, YouTube. So keep yep. those questions coming, and we will randomly choose two winners after the show. And you can tweet us. I'm sorry. At, okay. So <laughs> oh, sorry. I was just going to say you can tweet us at WS Roundtable, and we will get your questions or comments there. Or if you're on YouTube and you're just watching it straight on YouTube, there should be a link somewhere on the page that says to be a part of the conversation. Click that. It'll open up another screen, and you will be into the Q and A section where you can ask us questions there. And uh, Douglas, go on. Well, now I'd like to send it over to Khan. Khan, what do you got, Khan? Okay. Well, uh, because I'm uh, traveling at the moment, I've decided to bring along um, some travel uh, razors. And so I wasn't just going to bring them along. I was going to bring them along and see and put them through their paces and see how they work. So I've got a couple of these little fellas here, which are the um, the the uh, Merca. Uh, travel kits, and I also have one from from Phoenix. But I'll just show you. I've put these razors together. This is the uh, the Merca that comes in this particular. The handle, cool. yeah, yeah. Almost looks telescopic. Yeah, and then there's this li this little guy here. Incidentally, the the heads on these are identical, so there's no there's no uh, in there. And of course, I have the the um, the Phoenix. Yes. Um, which is which is really really cool. Uh, this happens to be the longest of, of, and you can actually shorten it for buff. Um, if, you know, if you want to buff around the mustache area or whatever. Um, very very good. The other thing, of course, um, is I bought along my synthetic brush. This is a um, a Samoog or an Amiga, I should say, Sintetico. If you can see that, si. nice Sintetico. Um, it's the six four three one seven four, 
and it's no longer available. I'm, so, I'm sorry about that. Yeah, they've, they've discontinued this. Oh, gee, what a surprise. <laughs> what a surprise, exactly. <laughs> oh, you know, Amiga, Amiga puts out a brush and then discontinues it the next week. You know? Yeah, why do they do that? I don't know. But I like this one because it's got, and you can see why I called it a Samoog. It's kind of got that very nice uh, acrylic, um, very groovy sort of retro y feel about it. But this thing dries very, very quickly, as you would expect from um, uh, a synthetic. I don't go anywhere without my tobacco travel stick. I think this nice. is um, standard issue for me. I know it polarizes people. Get over it. And of course, <laughs> the. the other <laughs> Um, just some uh, a loom that you can, uh, you know, tw yeah. twist, oh, nice. twist to open and, and use. And, and that's basically uh, my little kit. But of course, I have to say, and that's four, I've just shown you four razors, but um, for some inexplicable reason, I also brought along my uh, above the tie S1. You see, nice. I do have a mental loom. I do yeah, have a mental yeah. loom. That, that, that is a problem. That, that, that Peter Chicago? Yeah. No, <laughs> you're well prepared. Uh, yeah. Well, that's, yeah, that's, that's justification, I, Marty. <laughs> we're rationalizing this, I know. Um, well, I, yeah. I may be well prepared. I'm probably well prepared for the asylum. <laughs> <laughs> More than well, well prepared. <laughs> yeah, I've heard guys bringing lots of soap. I have not heard of guys bringing multiple and multiple razors, but... Oh, Peter do, does that, too. Peter had, like, six razors when he was over here in California. <laughs> hey. Uh, Why is David so loud? Yes, yeah. David. Oops. Real oh, quick, so I think if if you can move your mic back, back away from the bit, mic, <laughs> yeah. getting, like weird distortion. But you're good. Can, down, can, can I just can I just say there's something wrong with the radar, sir. There's something wrong with the radar. Can I just say, gentlemen uh, and, yes. and viewers, there's one thing about the PAA travel kit, um, and, and I'm finding that if you're if you're on the wrong side of let's say the age of 35. I won't be disclosing how old I am. Then this also comes in handy. Yes, um, <laughs> that is very handy. For, you know, ding, ding. For trimming bits and pieces. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. yeah you but I should have put a, you know I should have put a mirror in there as well because <laughs> I can't see my back. You know, I mean it's just. It's, 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 it'll be yeah. the upgrade. I see that Mark is, is, is nodding uh, as if he knows what I'm talking about. <laughs> Let's just say that uh, I think it's next week sometime I'm doing a, uh, an article on Sharpologists about body grooming razors where I, yeah. I kind of uh, talk about Funky. the ears and the nose and the places hair is just really <laughs> supposed to grow. Right? Yes. But yes. Con, actually, I do have a question for you, Con. You know, you, yeah. you took those four razors with you. Where did you go? Did you go by vehicle? Did you go by air? How, how did you travel? I, well, I, I traveled by air, and so you can put them in your... Uh, I can't bring them on the aircraft with me, obviously. I just pack them away. Pack them. Yeah. Um, but what I'm doing is I'm actually... Because I'm going to be doing a review sometime in the future, probably in the next 15 or 16 years, um, <laughs> I wanted to put these razors through their paces. Um, and really, and really test. So, really, for for convenience sake, I mean, as far as I am concerned, it's not very convenient bringing five razors with you. But that's not the point. Yeah. The point is, I want to, I want to test these things in situ. I, I, actually, it's on the spot. Let's see how these things perform. Sure. And some perform better than others. And for me, I think the the, the determining factor is balance of the razor. I yeah. mean, these heads, as I said, are almost identical. But it's it's about we've spoken about this before about the fulcrum and and how this this razor balances, and some of them to me feel a little inadequate and perhaps I mean I, I want to get as best a shave as I can when I'm travelling, and I don't know that some of these handles um, really do uh, the razor the, the head itself justice. Yep, I totally agree. Uh, yeah. And I noticed Mark on Sharpologist you actually have. An article on it's titled it's a video actually I guess how I traveled how I mm. shave yeah. when I travel so if you guys haven't checked that out go to sharpologist.com to check that out because it's a or his YouTube channel um, so yeah really great stuff yeah as you were saying that's kind of going back to this razor that's why. I just I don't understand. There is no fulcrum balance to this at all. <laughs> I know it's a super mild razor, but um, I don't get it. 
I don't get it. But I do have to say, when I traveled, I used the agent. PAA is the agent, which is, I believe, the same exact handle that's on the flight, but it's got a different head. And it's got great balance. Yeah. It's a little aggressive, but I like Interestingly it. enough, that, that's, that's been my daily driver for a long time as well. I love that handle whether I'm traveling or not. But yeah, so I mean, if you do like those short handles, the agent is a four-piece razor, so you can actually take it apart and make the, the handle even shorter, too. Because some yeah. people do dig those, Rico. Um, yeah. I know, Mark, recently on, on your travel video, you were using, I don't know what that was, Mark, that little, like, it looked like a, I, I don't know. What was that Cormier, small? It's called the Cormia razor. It, yeah. it basically, uh, it's a... It's, it takes a track two razor razor cartridge, but right. not much oh, more wow. than the cartridge. Yeah. So I mean, if you're if you're if weight is an issue, if you're out in the woods or whatnot, and like weight is an issue or space is an issue, that is that, you know, and you need a clean shave. That's that could be the right way to go. Or using the razor you have in your hand right now, Rico. You may not like it. There may be yeah. a little bit of a learning curve, but uh, yeah. yeah. I mean, that's the only only thing I can see. Yeah. So what what's up with questions? So we have several guys. Oh, did, uh, Con, just, I'm sorry. Con, was there more? Did you have yeah, soap no, or something? Uh, no, that's it. But but there are some gentlemen asking questions that we obviously okay. can't answer because we're moving along. We'll try and include these in the edited version of this video. Yeah. And so you can go off and have a look at, at, at what it is that we've been talking about. Well, sure. to the best of our ability, that is. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, keep those questions coming along. There's There are... Well, in excess of fifty questions here, yeah. and some of them have already been answered, and so I, I don't know that we can um, that we can uh, get to all of them. Well, uh, I've got a quick question here for yeah. uh, Marty, I guess, and I, or any of you guys actually, if you would know, on that frame back, somebody was just asking how how does it hone? That I don't Do know. You know? <clears throat> the only thing I know is they said that that <clears throat> excuse me, my throat still is that. Part of it, the reason it was a, um, it makes it so you don't get the uh, the spine wear potential issues uh, um, by the way the frame back's designed. So I'm assuming it removes, but I personally don't know. I know uh, a couple other guys might be able to answer that, but I I have no idea. Yeah. Okay. You'll uh, hone you'll hone that the same way as you'd hone any other razor. Okay. Um, again, if it's me if the frame back is still going to be made out of metal, so you still have to worry about home wear. But if it's in good shape, that's not something you'd really have to worry about for like a decade or something. But just yeah. if you ever do want to save the, any spine on any razor, just a, a, one layer of electrical tape is pretty much enough you'd probably need as long as you're not going too hard on the razor. Yeah. I'm not a really a straight razor shaver yet. I do have a friend uh, over down under in Australia who is sending me a very nice blade, uh, which I will be trying so um, shout out to Paul if you're watching. And uh, but yeah, uh, I do love the look of that razor. It's really really cool. Con, we got stuff going on down in Twitter. Yeah. We certainly do. But as I say, a lot of these questions have have, have already been answered. I'd I'd like to um, just say a few things if I can about about Mark Mantic, who who has. Um, uh, dedicated dedicated a large part of his time to putting out um, very very valuable content. I know that I was uh, and still am one of his um, uh, you know one of his fans and, and, and always enjoy his content. Um, but uh, but one thing that a lot of people don't realise is the amount of uh, time and effort that that Mark Mark puts into his videos. Um, we've had uh, private conversations behind the scenes where he's asked about. Uh, the technology and, and and what it is that you know we backwards and forwards and so um, I think that a lot of people that enjoy your content, Mark, also don't know that that there is I won't say that you agonise over these things, but you actually put in many many hours, yeah. many hours into, into yeah, putting this it. stuff together. Um, I mean, you know, we, you and I have spoken about you know um, all sorts of uh, colour grading programs and what cameras we use and the rest of it. Um, for somebody that wants to produce content on on YouTube and Vimeo or whatever, or wherever they want to produce it, um, are there some very, very basic things that they can uh, go to without, you know, busting the budget? Yeah. yeah. Um, yes, I, actually, I think there are. Uh, for a, uh, the, the technology is, has come quite a ways since I started 
making videos, but uh, I think uh, the, uh, the, the maybe the best camera to use is something you may have already in that uh, yep. if you've got an iPhone or a uh, reasonably good uh, Android phone that has a, a decent camera attached to it, and most of them do now, uh, they make very passable cameras for uh, yep. making videos. I think where you have to be the most careful then is your lighting. If you're in a bathroom, the odds are you'll probably have good enough lighting, uh, but you may need some a little additional extra lighting, and that may just be just like getting some clamp lights from your neighborhood uh, Home Depot or something like that. All you have to do is make sure that you put the same type of light in the clamp light as you do in your bathroom. So, for example, if you have incandescent lights uh, in your bathroom, make sure you get incandescent yep. lights for the clamp lights, or else you'll end up with what's what's called different color temperatures, and it'll make things look really funky. Uh, beyond that, uh, basic editing you can actually do online uh, for... Uh, even at YouTube has their own video. There are several free yeah. programs you can use. I, I, uh, what is it? iMovie for uh, Macs or yeah. Windows Movie Maker for Windows. They can get you the yeah. basics. Um, start with that and just learn from there. Yep. Yeah, I totally agree. And also, Mark, I just have to say again, congratulations on taking the step. Uh, full time with what you're doing now, doing Sharpologists and, and Mantic you. 59 yeah. YouTube. Uh, that's really awesome, and I and I also have to say thank you again for being on the show with us. My pleasure. I think all of us can attest to being inspired in some way, shape, or form watching your videos. Uh, I know you're one of the guys that I came across in the beginning. And uh, and the way you did it, like, and there's several guys out there. Geo Fat Boy is a guy. Um, Nick Shaves, um, sure. some of the bigger guys out there, I guess, and and you. But I think the way you explain it is probably the most in depth and easy to understand for the average oh, thank guy. You. Thank you. That especially that especially is coming from, you know, just a reg regular cartridge shaving background or uh, as you can attest to uh, uh, an electric razor we've heard so many horror stories on this show of guys saying man I used a electric razor and it chewed my face up and, and I went to this and I love it I do want to touch on something and I'll, I'll just go down the panel real quick um, and it's just a yes or no does do you uh, how should I phrase this do you guys experience irritation from time to time or is it a constant issue <clears throat> Yes or no? I'll say for me, yes, but it's getting better. David? Uh, occasionally, I will. It's not very, very, very rarely, actually. Once in a while, just from being sloppy, I'll give myself a bit of a rough shave. Yeah. Uh, but it really not. I'm really yeah. Marty? Um, yeah, occasionally just on my neck, but not nearly as regular as it used to be. Yeah. Mark? Yeah, right here. Uh, when yep. I'm uh, I, I'm constantly trying new products, so uh, the times that uh, that I'm trying something new, the odds are something's going to happen right there. Uh, I will yep. say though, uh, getting back to the one blade razor, that is the only razor I've ever tried right off the bat that I did not have irritation on. But uh, uh, typically for me, unless I'm using something very regularly, uh, this is the spot that will always get me. Yep. Uh, Douglas? Yeah, for very similar reasons. I, I try so many different yep. things that every now and then I'm, I'm going to try a new blade or a new razor, and it's just it's going to give me some either burn or irritation. Yeah, Con? Yeah, because traditional wet shaving is about variables, and yes. the variables uh, products that we use, the blades that we use, the, 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 the razors that we use, um, there will always be a, a learning curve, and and so I have definitely uh, gone through periods where I've had a, a less than perfect shave. Yeah. In fact, I don't think I have had a perfect shave. I've had very, <laughs> very, very good shaves. Um, uh, you know, I, I I think if you if you feel that you you you've mastered everything, then you'll be you'll be reminded <laughs> the next time you shave 
that there's I don't know why you haven't energy. had a good shave, Con. I mean, okay. uh, yeah, I know. It's, yeah, Vegemite. Thanks. Yeah. <laughs> See, Con, it's kind of suck it up. It reminds me of like the movie The The Last Samurai. If you've ever watched it, yes. you know the cher- yeah, the cherry blossoms. They weren't perfect absolutely. till he was de- dying. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Absolutely. That so, reminds me of ET, actually. Oh, I'm not as cultured. I'm sorry. That's all I got. <laughs> this is getting weird. Well, uh, what I want to say, though, look, yeah. all that said is, like, there is, uh, there really is not a perfect shave all the time. So, no, I mean, yeah, like, you, right. you can get a great shave. I find I get a, a baby butt smooth shave when I'm not trying to. So yeah. there's something zen about that as well, taking yeah. it back to the cherry blossoms. Yeah, I, I've been using – I've got a vintage Fazan uh, – what do you call it? Um, the most slant. aggressive razor ever? No, it's an open comb, and it's a – what do you call them? Slant. Uh, Slant. A slant razor. And I use it with a Wilkinson sword, German blade, and I'm getting awesome shaves. Every single time I use that combination, doesn't matter what soap I'm using, I get a great, great shave. Uh, that's the only thing that worries me about the one blade is because it's just that one blade that you can use right now. There's not a selection. I'm worried that a guy might get it, and that blade in particular might be not very... Not work for them. But, uh, Mark, I know most of us here, I'm pretty sure all of us here, are big proponents of mapping your, the grain of your face. And I know you've talked about that before. I know Khan's talked about that in a, in a video, a couple videos before. Uh, do you kind of want to highlight that for us real quick so some of the beginners out there and even some of the veterans that maybe haven't done it can get an idea of what, what it is, what it is that you're doing when you map the grain well, that's an interesting subject, actually, because uh, basically the grain is the direction your stubble grows in. For example, generally speaking, my grain goes down this way and up this way. Uh, so oh, uh. it's, it's a way for somebody who particularly uses a cartridge razor to follow the grain at first um, and then go, you know, maybe uh, across the grain for a slightly closer shave, the idea being to reduce the stubble in stages. Now, having said that, I am actually an advocate when you go to a double-edged razor or a single-blade razor, I am an advocate of making a really good lather and then just going straight down, uh, re-lathering yeah. and going straight down again. The idea is to start building that muscle memory uh, get acceptable shaves, but not great shaves. Uh, and, and then after you've got that muscle memory, then maybe going back a little to the, the, the grain aspect. But uh, that's it. I know it's kind of fudging both ways, but that's how I advocate it. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, quick question. We had one guy going back to that one blade razor mark. Um, Jeff Atkinson's asking, where in Texas, I guess, are they located? <laughs> Jeff, they're actually based in Austin, uh, South Austin specifically. Austin, Texas. And uh, they have oh. a very small crew right now, uh, really just a couple of employees. Uh, and the investor is actually based in Maryland. Cool. Uh, Douglas, we've got one here for you. And I wouldn't be surprised if the answer is yes. Douglas, do you plan on introducing more travel products in the future? Alex Gonzalez asks. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Simple answer. Uh, okay, this is kind of a funny question, Mark. Uh, what are some of the stranger or, I guess, different unique questions that you get on social media? <laughs> and that is from the Franz. <laughs> Wow, the irony. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, the irony in it. Honestly, I don't get that many strange questions. Um, Step up, Franz. <laughs> a, uh, a lot of basic questions. Um, a lot of uh, have you tried this kind of question, but nothing really way out of left field every once in a while, but... Uh, it's. I don't yeah. usually get a whole lot of real crazy messages. Most of them are just asking for help. Yeah. Do you uh, typically have? Is it mostly guys that are getting new to the hobby that are asking you questions? Yes, very much so. 
Okay, cool. Con, let's uh, jump on over to Twitter. Yeah, we've got a question here. Um, do we foresee the blades getting cheaper for one blade as demand increases? I mean, these are market forces, of course, as you know, it's economies of scale. If yeah. somebody wants to. Personally, I don't see it anytime soon, but you never know. Yeah. Whose mic is that? I don't know. Yeah. Yeah, I see what I'm hoping for that blade, that razor in particular, is if it becomes really popular, that other people will start, like uh, Wilkinson or whoever out there, will start making more options, or even Feather and Kai and stuff like that. They'll just make, you know, like the mild version of the auto strop or aggressive or whatever they want to call it. But uh, I think that would be, diversify on the blades would be really neat to see. Uh, let me see what's going on over here. Real quick, David, is your microphone rubbing up against you? Sounds like a windstorm. Okay. Yeah, I don't know what's going on. All right. Uh, we have a question yeah. here from Steven uh, Davidson, and he's asking, what are your favorite aftershaves that keep you coming back on a regular basis? And we'll start with Mark. Right now, I really don't have a favorite aftershave. Um, it depends on, for me, the, the, the time of year. I generally go for something lighter, uh, but with a ni nice matte finish, really temper skin food in, in the summer. Yep. And then in the winter when I need a, a lot more moisturizing, uh, I have typically gravitate to Village Barber uh, yes. aftershave balm. But... Um, I, I don't really have a favorite. It's it's more like a uh, what I need to do. Yeah. Are you... Nope. No, go for it. I, I actually have quite a bit of experience with artisans. Uh, they're always they're always sending me stuff. Uh, it, it's actually getting more and more difficult to find the time to try it all. Uh, yeah. That's I'm trying to think of something that's really stood out lately. Um, I should say I'll, most of the artisans are actually very good. They're very competitive. Uh, performance is usually pretty good. The problem is the, the artisans kind of come and go, uh, either the artisan th themselves or a particular product, a particular soap or cream scent, for example. Uh, they come and go. It's just the nature of the beast. Um, one, I will say one particular artisan product that I really, really like is the uh, William Newman Old Fashioned Soda Shop Shave Cream. Uh, I think that stuff is dynamite. Um, wow. Razor Rock certainly has some good products. Uh, 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 trying to think of some others here that, that I've been using lately. Uh, it's just, it, it all starts kind of blending together after a while. Yeah, there's a lot out there. Um, real quick, I guess, uh, David, question uh, as far as aftershave favorites. Yep. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Yeah.
Yeah. I'd have to say, as far as I, I know, we kind of had a similar question like about this, I think, a couple weeks ago, aftershave or balm. And it, I, I know the question is kind of, it just depends. And kind of like what you said, Mark, I'm trying so many different products. I do, I think in the summertime, kind of prefer alcohol based products. A lot of them are like PAA or uh, Fine or uh, Folsman Company, something like that. Um, Balms for me, for some reason, I get maybe I just need to go lighter on them. But I have it's like my skin has a weird reaction to it, so I I kind of break out or something. I don't know, but um, but balms aren't always my favorite. I have to find some that are really good. Actually, going back to this, like this one works great. Uh, but I'm not a huge balm guy. But uh, Marty, favorite aftershaves or unique uh, ones for me. Why don't you keep For going me, back to? It's uh, Fufu Gear by uh, PA. I I know we're all a lot of us same PA, but I have a lot of their aftershaves, and that's the one that to me is the most. It just has such a distinct smell. It works with so many different things, and that I just when I start saying, "Oh, if I want to start matching that day, I'll start opening my soap tin and I'll go to an aftershave. I'll go back and forth." And I'll pass it over saying, I just used that like a couple days ago. And then I come back to it again. I'm like, nope, I'm using it today. So that's one that just really always hits me. Yeah. Soap. Uh, <coughs> Soap. Yeah. Con, <laughs> I'll ask you real quick. Aftershave. Uh, you keep uh, going back. It would have to be Al, uh, PAA's Alfin. Uh, yep. And and Balm would uh, probably have to be just Nivea Balm is just works every single time. See, I, I've yeah. got to say that Mark point I is that um, it's not that we're mindful of saying, oh, I, I, this is my favorite one, and then people will jump on that or whatever. It's that it, they really do, after a while, cast you know, it becomes this nebulous of, <laughs> of aftershaves. You don't really... Yeah. And favorite, the word favorite is actually kind of loaded. Yes. Um, my favorite aftershave is the one I used last, um, you know, b because it was the one that was suited to... The, the season, okay. I mean, if you during the cooler months, I tend to go for balms and things like that. Um, in the in the in the warmer months, I'll use ones that have a bit more of a menthol key. So it kind of changes, and it's very 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 difficult to answer a question like, "What is your favorite aftershave?" Uh, yeah. What are we really asking? Are we talking about post shave feel? Are we talking about the scent? Um, are we talking about uh, you know it's the one that, that that you can that lasts through the day? I mean, there are so many variables. Again, as I said, traditional wet shaving is about variables. And trying to pin down variables to a one word, you know, slogan or flag yeah. or whatever is incredibly difficult and fraught with danger, I have to say. Yeah. I think my goal personally is trying to make my house smell like a barber shop. That's just my goal. <laughs> I just want to have so many aftershaves, my house smells like yeah. a barber shop. Yeah. Douglas, do you have one that you keep well, going back to? I know you're always trying stuff because you you make it. Bird's Bay yeah. Rum, I'm guessing. Burst Bay Rum is well. See, <laughs> this is the thing. It's like, you know, historically, back in the day, fifty years ago, you did have a favorite scent. You did have a favorite aftershave. You had one. It was like brand loyalty back then, because there weren't so many options like there are nowadays. Yeah. And that's why I say I pity the future, of the, ch the future children that'll be like, this reminds me of my dad. They're they're not going to be saying that because we we use everything now. But um, yeah. And so yeah, my original scent. I was always a sandalwood or a bay rum type of guy going back, you know, years. And Burt's Bay Rum, though now discontinued, I still stock up on it whenever I see it on eBay. But that is that is like that's that's my brand. That's the one thing I'll always go back to. Granted, I use a lot of different aftershaves and colognes, uh, but Burt's Bay Rum is yeah, that is my all-time favorite. After that, you know, I like Alphine as well. If I could make Alphine for the rest of my life, I would. I love that. And yeah. then uh, Penhaligon's LP number nine, I think, is also very interesting. Yeah. Uh, and you know, a lot of people confuse that. It doesn't stand for Love Potion number nine. It stands for Long Play oh, number wow. nine because it's yeah, yeah. the last thing and the staying power of it. Just a little FYI, a little trivia for you. So that's my take on it. Cool. Uh, Con, we got something going on over in Twitter. Yeah, before we go to Twitter, I, I guess we keep referring to um, Eastern philosophies here and, and, and Buddhism and, and, and Zen, but um, I, I think never has, has this statement, uh, this Buddhist statement, been as true as when, it, when we refer to aftershaves, and that is that choice is misery. Now, <laughs> by, that, by that we mean 
there is so much choice out there yes. that you, know, you, you, you agonize over choosing one thing over another. And, and we are all faced with a choice every single morning. Whenever we, when, whenever we, we walk into our, our bathroom to try and you know, select what we're going to be shaving with the next day, we're confronted with enormous amount of choice, uh, far more choices than our, than our parents and grandparents um, would have been faced with. So I guess I understand what choices misery really means. Having said yeah. that, I wouldn't have it any other way. Yeah. Yes, exactly. <laughs> What's the sound of one hand shaving, Con? Yeah, that's right. <laughs> that's right. And if a razor Save falls, now. And, if a razor, if a razor falls, falls and nobody's it? around. Does it yeah. matter? Yeah. <laughs> what else we got? Okay. Um, <laughs> yeah, we've got trouble hearing David's voice. That's that's a tw yeah. that's, that's actually trending. This no, is trending. I have no, tr no trouble there. What are we yeah. going? <laughs> <laughs> uh, he's back. Uh, I see. <laughs> we have a question. <laughs> oh gosh. We, we have a question. Here, we have a Twitter question here. Yes. Go Can you for punch it. that high? Yeah. We, we have a Twitter question here and I'm going we're going to have to respectfully ask my, I think I suspect know what it means, but where did the handle Mantic fifty nine come from? Yes. Classic. Okay. Um, great question, by <laughs> the way. Years years ago, before the internet even Whoa. So long as Wait a were. minute. Wow. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so we're, talking, we're talking the 1980s. I was real active on bulletin board networks and uh, CompuServe, for those who remember that. Yeah, I remember that. And, and things like that. And my, I, had a, uh, I had a screen name that was actually much longer than that, uh, than that name, but... Uh, Everybody in conversation used to just simply shorten that really long name to the word Mantic. And come to find out the word Mantic is actually a, a real word. It means somebody who can uh, see into the future, which I thought was kind of cool. But anyway. <laughs> <laughs> so it's actually a Greek word, incidentally. It's a oh, Greek word. Okay. Uh, so when Our it came Greek. time to uh, create my first... YouTube channel, actually my only YouTube channel, uh, I just naturally requested the word Mantic. Well, somebody already had that channel, or that channel name. Uh, so I, uh, I just simply appended a random number to it, uh, Mantic59, and it accepted, and uh, that's the name I've been using as uh, screen names ever since for some reason. A not very interesting story, but that's what it was. <laughs> well, you know what's funny about that, Mark? There's a place in uh, – it's a cool kind of trendy area in Dallas. A lot of tiny cool shops and stuff. But they've got a place called Mantiques, which is a man antique store. And I always kind of thought maybe that's where you were going with it. Like it had something to do with – I don't know what I was thinking. but nope. But very cool, very cool story on that. Uh, Con, Twitter, what's Twitter. happening over okay, there? What we? I think we got time for about maybe one more question. Um, everyone wants to. There's there's a couple of people here that want us to raise a toast to traditional wet shaving. Raise a. That's toast. a request. It's more. Than, yeah, raise a raise a toast to traditional okay. wet shaving. We'll put Mark here. I'm drinking now water. <laughs> And You're not going to drink that after show, Douglas. God, I'm, <laughs> I'm, drinking, I'm drinking Booster. <laughs> Salud. Wow, Salud. that's awesome. Uh, Mantic, I do have a question for you, sir. Sure. You have seen, I'm sure, quite a bit of change in the shaving world since when you got into it. What, if you could project, I know this is kind of a hypothetical and we don't really know. We always, I don't know, it's like something we like to kind of gander about, but... What do you see as a trend that's going to happen, or long term or short short term in the shaving world? What shaving world? A trend. I think uh, I think the trend toward back to double edged razors from multi blades will continue. Um, yes. 
I think uh, the trend that's just beginning over the past year or so with uh, better shaving creams becoming more mainstream uh, with availability, even though they might be brushless, for example, or, or actually many of them are brush friendly. For example, Cremo Cream, for example, the the, the caffeinated cream from Pacific Shaving that yep. you're starting to see in more and more mass outlets. Uh, I think you're going to see more of that. Um, probably not getting people into old school wet shaving like we do, but getting away from the razor blade wars and the, the gook coming from a, a pressurized can uh, into something yeah. a little more user-friendly, a little less expensive, uh, kind of harking back to an earlier time. Yeah, exactly. Uh, we got a quick question here from Rock, <laughs> Rock Dimple. <laughs> and I'll start with you, uh, Mark. What do you prefer, night or a day shave? Do you have a time preference? I definitely prefer a day shave. All righty. Con, night, day. Um, day shave. Day. Douglas, night, day. Uh, morning shave. Morning shave. Marty? Um, <clears throat> midday after the gym, before I head into work. David? Midday. Night. All right. I'm a nighttime dude, too. I... Nice. Yeah, uh, I think for me it's just I, I want to be a morning person, but I'm not. So I don't get up that early to do it, and I like to enjoy my shave. I don't want to feel rushed. So I do it when I come home after work. So great. I'd, I'd agree. If I if I if I work days, I would be a, I would be a nighttime shaver, but I work nights, so it's I don't have to worry about that rushing. Yeah. Uh, Ed Waters is asking a question here for you, Mantic. And he's asking, do you see the new single-edge razors, like the One Blade, Mongoose, uh, Razor Rock Hawk, which I, technically I don't think is out yet. Uh, do you see that capturing a bigger segment of the wet shaving community for single-edge razors? Honestly, I don't right now, uh, simply because of the recognition of double-edged razors. People simply understand them, recognize them, even though they may not have used them. They've seen them on old TV shows or old uh, movies or their grandfathers or whatever. Uh, personally, I don't see uh, single edges overtaking double edges anytime soon. But, you know, anything's yeah. possible. Do you think that's because of the selection of blades or... Yeah. I think that's. Uh, I think it's the the familiarity aspect and the availability of different blade brands to find what works best for you. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Douglas, got one here for you. In one of the previous roundtables, this is from Alex Gonzalez. One of the previous roundtables, Douglas said that the brushes are becoming a popular thing to make. I've seen a few artisans start offering. Shave cream now, do you guys think that shaving creams will become the next big, big thing? I'm assuming, because that's something, I'm assuming he's talking about actual legitimate cream. So I don't know. Um, I honestly don't think so. I mean, I think a, a soap puck or a harder soap is the, well, for me, I think it's the way to go just because it'll last forever. You yeah. know, cream will tend to, I mean, th those do have a, a shelf life. Um, so I don't see them. I see this year. What I see right anyways this year was originally it was aftershaves. It was the year of the aftershaves yeah. and colognes, and now it's morphed into this whole Poisson style brush yes. brush thing. So it's I see that I don't know if we can fit anything else in this year, uh, but who knows the way that you know this it's like dog years and when it comes to wet shaves. Uh, I don't know cream. Maybe well, we pre shaves. Go, David. I was just going to say that. <laughs> yeah. 
So you just we don't have that equipment in our kitchen, David, is what it all comes down to. You know, yeah. everyone has a crock. <laughs> <Okay. laughs> yeah. quick, quick question, Douglas. I do have a. I do have a quick question for you, Douglas. Why, uh, why don't we mute his mic again? Where is that? Uh, <laughs> yes, Rico. Uh, explain to us, I guess, real quickly before we we head out. I guess the difference between kind of the soaps like you make the creams themselves, legitimate cream, not a crope, but a cream, and triple milled. What's what's the big differences on those? Oh, come on. Don't do that. <laughs> Hold on a second. Oh. Okay. Sorry. Go for it. Can you hear me? Yes. So it really, it just has to do with... David, please stop. <laughs> Thank you. Water? Can okay. you hear me? Yes, we got you. We got Can you, you hear me? Yep. Water content is the biggest thing. So, I mean, as you progress from those different soaps, it's it's just, some of them have more water than others. Uh, the, the triple mill the, is pressed. You know, all the water and moisture is out of that puck, you know. Oh, okay. uh, and then you have then you have a typical puck like like mine uh, that's it's curing of the this is why you're curing your soap is uh it's the water's evaporating that's in it. Uh, with creams, you you want the water in there. That's what yeah. makes it soft and you know and cream-like. So uh, that's what it has to do with. I, I get. Is that? Did I answer your question? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I just the whole muting so, thing threw me off. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry. And the on on the cream, you said there's a shelf life compared to like more of a shelf well, life. Well, yeah, because of because of the water content, and in fact, a lot of creams you'll see like that there'll be preservatives in there and whatnot, which will keep them a, alive longer. But um. Yeah, there will be because I mean it's it's just a balance of water to whatever the raw ingredients are, so that it can go rancid, it can mold. So okay. it's, it's just water, you know. Um, so with some of them, some of them with more with uh, more preservatives than others, you could actually you could cure them and let them turn into a hard soap, and they would still function as such. Oh, um, okay. I'm trying to think if it's Martin de Condre. I think I left one of those soaps open one time for a couple of days, because I'm just so used to leaving soaps open. I leave my soaps open as much as possible, harder soaps yeah. anyways. They just get better, they get harder, they last longer. And this goes for any type of hard soap. I just always leave them open. I never relive them. Uh, yeah. My bathroom's a bloody mess. But uh, when it comes to cream, I learned it the hard way, like because that top layer did start cracking, and it almost looked like there was mold forming on there. And again, yeah, it has to do with the water oh, content wow. in there. And, and if I can jump in here, uh, yeah. a couple of uh, earlier this year, uh, Colonel Conk came out with a, a line of shaving cream, and before they came out, they actually asked me uh, to help test uh, the different recipes, I guess is the best word, and what, what Douglas is really saying really came true with that because you would, it, it's a, a, soap, uh, a soap is not nearly as difficult to make as a cream, even for a larger company. Creams, the, the tiniest little change in one ingredient can make a huge difference in the, oh, wow. in the, in the rest of the product. And they yep. showed me uh, at least four different iterations of shaving cream. <laughs> and the first couple were just, as, as uh, Douglas might say, bloody awful. Uh, wow. what, they eventually came up with a, a with a with a decent product, but I, I really respect now and understand a lot better just what goes into trying to make a cream uh, versus a an artisan uh, making a soap with the yeah the uh, things they have at hand. Uh, yeah. Making a cream is just a whole nother story. Yeah, so I'm um, just kind of a fun question. Last question for everybody in the panel, and I'll start with you, Mark. If you had to choose, not not naming brands, but just a style of soap, if you had to choose one, and that was all you got, cream, crope, hard soap, or a triple milled soap, which one would you pick? Ooh, boy, it'd be, uh, it's I know, really I know there's so many. Triple milled in a cream, uh, I think I'd have to go with a cream, though. I think I prefer creams more than Okay. Soap. Douglas, if you had to choose, what would you pick? Uh, well, uh, for 
value, I'd go for a hard soap. So, I mean, they just last longer. Um, yep. So that's where... I mean, I love tobacco. I think tobacco is wonderful. I think it's one of the best soaps ever invented. Yeah. Uh, but a, a, a cream is good, too. What I like to do is, uh, you know, traditionally a barber, sh- would uh, before they put the hot towel on you, they would lather up your face first with some soap yeah. and leave the lather on, then throw the towel on top of that. That would just aid in breaking down the hair or softening the hair, prepping it for the shave. Yeah. What I like to do is use a brushless uh, cream. And I rub that on first, and then I'll use a hot towel and hold on top of that. So that's what I've been doing lately, and uh, so I like combining them almost. Okay, con. If Especially you had... if you have a if you have some cheap soaps lying around, like gummy, or like you someone got you a gift of brushless soap, and you're like, oh, it's brushless. I'll never use this. It's been sitting under your sink. Try it as a pre-shave soap, or yeah. try it in with a hot towel. You know, yeah. get the most out of your. Yeah, that's great. Con. I would have to say a hard soap. It's a like nod it. to year to year, and it's yeah. it's just I love it. It's just hard soaps. Yeah, Marty. That's <clears throat> I'd say hard as well. Triple milled's a close second, but hard soap. Yeah, David. <laughs> what? E- yeah, either uh, any of you guys on the panel. Uh, do you know what is tobacco? Is that triple milled? Is that just a hard soap? Anybody? I know it's I not triple it's... milled. I wouldn't imagine it's triple milled because I was able to push it into a separate container fairly easy. Uh, so it's just probably like just a soap. Just a hard it's a hard soap. soap. Yeah, it was a harder, yeah. yeah. I think, this is a very weird, hard, difficult question. I think I would have to say triple milled. They, hmm. I, I think they're a little harder to lather, but if you know how to do it, it's not that hard. You just work with it a little bit. But I just love the idea if you can have this beautiful puck of soap that's just sitting there and it lasts forever. I think that's one cool thing about Martin DeCondre. I don't own it. Uh, I actually don't really enjoy the scent of that soap, but I just love the idea that you could be using that for a whole year and barely see a dent in that product. Uh, That is awesome. So, uh, Body soaps. I think for body soaps, triple milled is the way to go. Yeah. So, guys, we have reached about a little over the hour and a half mark. And uh, I just want to say thanks to Mark for being on the show. Mantic, appreciate you being here today. My pleasure. Yes, thank you so much, Mark. I, much, I'd like to. Uh, I'd much like respect, to, sir. I'd like to quickly uh, point out that. Uh, how very random and small the world can be because Marty is in lives in the same little town in Wisconsin that I grew up in. Yep, <laughs> it's a fantastic little small world. <laughs> that is awesome. <laughs> yeah. And how weird is it that we're all into wet shaving as a hobby and trying out all these different wonderful products and talking about it? Uh, again, we're all Mark, wearing just pants to... too. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, what's I just, up with that? Yeah, yeah. Uh, Except for David. <laughs> so, Mark, I just want to say thank you. Uh, I know thank you've you inspired me. all of us in some way. Thank if you. guys want to find you and check out your stuff, I know we've mentioned it a couple times, but where can they go online to check you out? Well, the uh, YouTube channel uh, is youtube.com slash user slash mantic59. And my uh, website is sharpologist.com. Yep. And uh, congratulations again. Thank you for being here. Thank you. Con. Thank you so much, Mark. It's, it's been a, a real pleasure having you. Thank yep. you. Con, the guy who Shaving now in. really yep. really can't be found because you're no. I don't even know where you are, but you're somewhere. Yeah. Shavetheman.com.au. Yes. And Marty? Sorry about that. My son was talking nope. to me. Um, nope, 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 nope. Everywhere uh, as uh, Marty Pape or uh, MartyPape.com. And the truth, David Gonzalez, where can people find you? Yep. And you can find me at Rico's Corner on YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, Voice Fight, all those social media outlets. And Douglas. Our beloved you captain, where can people find you, sir? At Phoenix. <laughs> PhoenixShaving.com <laughs> Phoenix or yeah. CrownKingShaving.com. 
And where can guys get that Australian shaving cream that you were holding up? That Vegemite. Uh, yeah, it, I, I think it's Vegamite. Uh, yeah. This Vegamite.com. Vegamite.com. Yeah. And do you want to highlight the giveaway one more time? You want to mention that real quick? Uh, yes, folks. Uh, what do you, do you guys think we should uh, shout out the name of the winner on our next show? Yes. Or before then? Yeah, let's okay, do the next, next show, show, folks. Next thank show, you all winners. For yeah. yeah. So, guys, thank you again. <laughs> Thanks to our guests for being here. This is the Wet Shavers Roundtable. You can always tweet us at WS Roundtable if you have a question, or you can be a part of the conversation on YouTube directly. And also, Go to wetshavingtv.xyz and hit send, and it's a pre-populated tweet that will tell people that you're watching our show. Again, thanks for being here. We enjoy talking about shaving, answering people's questions, and talking to our guests. So everybody, thanks for being there, and we'll talk to you later. See ya. High five. <laughs>